peoples and the shroud and wrapping all nations. He will destroy death forever. The Lord will wipe away the tears from every cheek. He will take away his people's shame everywhere on earth. For the Lord has said so. That day it will be said, See, this is our God, in whom we have hoped for salvation. The Lord is the one in whom we hoped. We exult and we rejoice that he has saved us. The word of the Lord. reading from the second letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Since we have, by an act of mercy, been entrusted with this work of administration, there is no weakening on our part. On the contrary, 
we will have none of the reticence of those who are ashamed, no deceitfulness or watering down the word of God. But the way we commend ourselves to every human being with a conscience is by stating the truth openly in the sight of God. For it is not ourselves that we are preaching, but Christ Jesus as the Lord, and ourselves as your servants for Jesus' sake. It is the same God that said, let there be light shining out of darkness who has shone in our minds to radiate the light of the knowledge of God's glory, the glory on the face of Christ. We are only the earthenware jars that hold this treasure to make it clear that such an overwhelming power comes from God and not from us. The word of the Lord. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. A dispute arose between the apostles about which should be reckoned the greatest. But Jesus said to them, Among pagans it is the kings who lord it over them, and those who have authority over them are given the title benefactor. This must not happen with you. No, the greatest among you must behave as if he were the youngest, the leader as if he were the one who serves. For who is the greater, the one at table or the one who serves? The one at table, surely, yet here am I among you as one who serves. You are the men who have stood by me faithfully in my trials, and now I confer a kingdom on you, just as my father conferred one on me. You will eat and drink at my table in my kingdom, and you will sit on thrones to judge the twelve tribes of Israel. The Gospel of the Lord. Well, remembering Mario and uh, his long, rich, and fruitful life, and conscious of his physical presence here this morning, it's hard not 
to smile. Uh, forgive me, but there it is. He had a certain manner, shall we say, a certain sense of the bella figura and his own dignity. As a boy at Blair's and a student at the Scots College, it was well known that he had no love for football, but plenty for uh, designing sets for and performing in Gilbert and Sullivan. In later years, Cardinal Winning, God forgive him, found the mannered, aesthetic side of Mario an irresistible target. But the more one knew Mario, the more one realized that despite appearances, he would not have been finally or fully happy as a Renaissance prince bishop or as a prelate of the Ancien Regime. Uh, he had too much heart, too much humanity. The boy from Barga, or more strictly the Elgin Loon, always came out on top, thank God. Uh, an Aberdeen parishioner told me how luridly Mario had been described to him, and how then on a pilgrimage uh, he finally encountered this warm, humorous, approachable bishop who was just happy sitting on the grass and chatting with the folk for an hour and a half. This is the Mario we remember today. Well, here I suppose I must declare an interest. I first set eyes on Mario uh, when I was 25 and recently professed as a monk. I can still picture him. It was a February day of fearsome winter weather, and he was sitting by the fire in the chapter house of Fuscadon Abbey. The uh, early 40s parish priest of Wick and Thurso, bright-eyed and with that notable Roman nose. Uh, a few days later, we heard that he had been appointed bishop of Aberdeen. Uh, later, he would ordain me as a deacon and then as a priest, uh, bless me as abbot and co-ordain me as bishop, all that over a span of 30 years. I think of him, therefore, as sacramentally my father. And it was a grace uh, to visit him with others uh, here in Queen Elizabeth Hospital on the day he died. I have to confess, I noticed the nose again. But uh, an addendum to his will, written 20 years ago, just after his coming here, reads, I desire to proclaim my confidence in God's mercy as I end my days and to acknowledge the gift of his grace when called to priestly and episcopal service. Called to priestly and episcopal service. In the light of that phrase and of today's gospel, his choice of his episcopal Motto sincero corde servire, to serve with a sincere heart. It's only natural for us today to recall something of and say thanks for that service. He was 64 years a priest and 45 years a bishop. In his Elgin Primary School, he famously declared his desire to become Pope. <laughs> well, <laughs> um, his priesthood and its fullness as bishop was his life and his love, and they touched so many lives 
over those many years. Ordained in 1958, his youthful ministry would have coincided with the pontificate of St. John the 23rd and then with the Second Vatican Council. The latter shaped him. He was always a man of the council. After a spell at St. Mary's Cathedral, Aberdeen, he was sent to Caithness, far to the north, and a world of its own. A wick was already, had already a church, and was a parish. But Thurso, some 20 miles uh, to the west, was not. And Mario had the church and the presbytery built there. So, at St. Anne's Thurso, all those years ago, an interest in design and church architecture first found expression, an interest that culminates in this cathedral of St. Andrew, so transfigured by his renovation. Happily, happy coincidence or providence, uh, today is St. Fergus's day, and St. Fergus, among other things, is the patron of Wick. So, beginning and end of his ministry come together. After 15 years in Caithness, he'd say later it was far too long in such a place, he was nominated bishop. And the rest, well, the rest is history and part of the story of many of us. For the dissertation for his license he, in Rome, he had written on Newman's essay on consulting the faithful in matters of doctrine. And St. John Henry Newman, as he is now, always remained a luminary for him. He had his Episcopal heroes too, that servant of the servants of God, Pope Gregory the Great, from whose feast on the 3rd of September he chose two of today's readings. And another hero, the gracious Savoyard, St. Francis de Sales. A Christian gentleman was how an Aberdeen worthy once described Mario to me. Now, it's interesting that uh, his episcopacy was in a sense framed by the two papal visits, that of St. John Paul II in 1982 and that of Pope Emeritus Benedict uh, in 2010. It was between those events, more or less, that his episcopal episcopacy fell. In his inimitable way, he tra transversed, traversed that particular span of Scottish church history, perhaps yet to be defined and already different from where we are now. Uh, it's good that there should be representatives of the civic authorities here, because he enjoyed uh, civic events, he knew how to work a room, and was a very good dinner companion. He could be uh, alarmingly frank. One story which he told me was that he was at one such event. I'm sure it, it must have been in Aberdeen, it would never happen in Glasgow, uh, <laughs> when uh, he was well, the person next to him uh, rather went for him. Uh, I don't know what the issues were. And Mario just said to him, you are one of the most unpleasant men I have ever met. <laughs> and turned his attention to the person on the other side. <laughs> but uh, in such settings, I was always struck how consistently he confessed the faith. He would always speak up 
for the church and Christian tradition. He was never embarrassed about being Catholic. As far as I can, am concerned, he once said, we are part of Scottish society. The Catholic Church is not foreign to Scotland. He relished recalling Catholic history. After one of his lengthy sermons in a, an historic Murray church, uh, the visiting prelate who was presiding commented that Mario has turned the pages of history for us, indeed leaving no page unturned. <laughs> He will be remembered also very much for his ecumenical sensibility and his wide and appreciated involvement in dialogue with other Christians and the workings of various ecumenical bodies and agencies. And in later years, with no less commitment, he engaged in interfaith uh, dialogue. He supported the Catholic uh, knightly orders, represented here and represented very much last night at the reception of his body. He could be a sharp and perceptive critic of the extravagances of secularism or the errors of government or social injustice. He was an eloquent advocate of a bioethics that respected the dignity of the human person from conception to natural death and a champion of the Christian understanding of marriage. On another front, he was always well disposed to religious orders and congregations. Uh, to my own community in Murray, he was a stalwart friend and always a welcome visitor. He would recall a picnicking as a boy with his parents and sister in the priory grounds before the monks returned. And his father prophesied that they would. And when, in 1948, they did, the teenage Mario served at the official opening mass of what was then Buscadden Priory. Undeterred, by contemporary barbarians, in which he might have numbered me, he championed the cultural heritage of the church, both in Scotland and more widely as part of a pontifical council for culture. Indeed, uh, the future of St. Mary's Chapel Lairs was a preoccupation of his last days. In some domains, correct note, but there was never any doubt of his commitment. In the Northeast, I can say this from experience, he brought the church down from the glens, as it were, and out of the back streets. He wasn't willing for it or its bishop to be consigned to the footnotes. The University of Aberdeen was the first to give him an honorary doctorate, and he celebrated the first Catholic Mass since the Reformation in Bishop Elphinstone's University Church. It said a lot that at the time of the Piper Alpha disaster in 1988, it was he who led the mourning in Aberdeen. Uh, he was described in one uh, uh, very off-the-mark obituary as a feat. He was nothing of the kind. Uh, he was perceptive, practical, no pushover, and he was sustained by a sense of self and mission. Well, I don't mean to weary you by recalling all this, nor to uh, degenerate in, uh, into eulogy. I just hope it will help us find the way as it were, to the heart of this multifaceted ministry, this long, rich, and fruitful life of 88 years. What held it together?
It was indeed the ideal of service, the service of the Lord and of his people. And it was the liturgical, sacramental, preaching role of the bishop which stood at the center of this service and energized its many ramifications. He was a natural celebrant. He must have confirmed a great number of young people over the years, celebrated many ordinations, and performed the Holy Eucharist in many varied settings. He liked to recall that. He cared for and about the liturgy. His first pastoral letters as a bishop in 1977 were a commentary on the order of mass. He encouraged communion under both kinds. Uh, he introduced the permanent diaconate uh, to Scotland, and this is well witnessed here today. And it was in his cathedrals and elsewhere that he could, in St. Paul's words, preach Christ Jesus as Lord and ourselves as his servant, and could, albeit an earthenware vessel, communicate the treasure. I was thinking how much he will enjoy the Isaian banquet, the fine food and the good wine. Remembering Mario, we remember a good and faithful servant. And we pray that through the intercession of Our Lady of Aberdeen, Our Lady of Good Success, and of Saints Peter and Paul, his judgment may be a merciful one. And we, the Catholic people of Scotland, as well as our friends of other denominations and religions and in civic society, have much to be grateful for. It is far more uh, than a smile at some human foible that Archbishop Mario leaves us with. Uh, he, we respond to him, surely, with much affection and appreciation. Heart speaks to heart. He certainly, over the years, spoke to mine, and I don't believe that I am alone. When he spoke at his own, I must say, uh, he left, it's a very Mario touch, he left notes for the homilies. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I have uh, tried, more or less, to be faithful to them. Uh, when he spoke at his own ordination as bishop in 1977, he quoted St. Gregory the Great, Son of man, I have appointed you as watchman for the house of Israel. Now a watchman, says Gregory, takes up his position on the heights so that he can from a distance see whatever approaches. Who am I? What kind of watchman am I? I do not stand on the pinnacle of achievement. I languish rather in the depths of my weakness. And yet the creator and redeemer of mankind can give me, unworthy though I be, the grace to see life whole and power to speak about it effectively. It is for love of him that I do not spare myself in preaching. As I say, he quoted those words when he was ordained a bishop in 1977. He wrote them out again in a private note in 2002. And in another note of 2016, he called them still dear to me. Dear Mario, your preaching, celebrating, and pastoring done, may you rest in peace and enter into the joy of your Lord. Amen.
God, the Almighty Father, raised Christ his Son from the dead, with confidence we ask him to save all his people, living and dead. For Archbishop Mario, who in baptism was given the pledge of eternal life, that he may now be admitted to the company of the saints. Lord, in your mercy. For our brother who ate the body of Christ, the bread of life, that he may be raised up on the last day. Lord, in your mercy. For our brother Mario, who served the church as a priest and bishop, that he may be given a place in the liturgy of heaven. Lord, in your mercy. For our deceased relatives and friends, and for all who have helped us, that they may have the reward of their goodness. Lord, in your mercy. For the family and friends of our brother Mario, that they may be consoled in their grief by the Lord, who wept at the death of his friend Lazarus. Lord, in your mercy. For all of us here, who worship in faith, that we may be gathered together again in God's kingdom. Lord, in your mercy. Almighty and merciful God, eternal shepherd of your people, listen to our prayers and grant that your servant Mario, to whom you entrusted the care of this church, may enter the joy of his eternal master, there to receive the rich reward of his labors. We ask this through Christ our Lord.
Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. We humbly beseech your boundless mercy, Lord, that this sacrifice, which your departed servant and Archbishop Mario, while in the body offered to your majesty for the salvation of the faithful, may now bring him to your pardon, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. In him the hope of blessed resurrection has dawned, that those saddened by the certainty of dying might be consoled by the promise of immortality to come. Indeed, for your faithful Lord, life is changed, not ended. And when this earthly dwelling turns to dust, an eternal dwelling is made ready for them in heaven. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and avenged with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so from the rise and the sun to its setting of your sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration that they become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he is betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, 
take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of Mystery of faith. as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven. And as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church and recognize the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Granted, we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with this Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. Make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with Saint Peter and Paul, Saint Andrew, Saint Fergus, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and the salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant, Francis, our Pope, my brother William, the bishop of this place, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you in your compassion, O merciful Father, Gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. Remember your servant, Archbishop Mario, whom you have called from this world to yourself. Grant that he who was united with your son in a death like his may also be one with him in his resurrection. And from the earth he will raise up in the flesh those who have died and transform our lowly body after the pattern of his own glorious body. To our departed brothers and sisters too, and to all who are pleasing to you after passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, when you will wipe away every tear from our eyes. For seeing you are God as you are, we shall be like you for all the ages praise you without end. Through Christ our Lord, to whom you bestow the world, all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, O unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Saviour's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord. Lord, we pray from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we will be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not in our faith, but in the faith of your church. 
graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign for ever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy. You should enter into my room. But only say the Lord, and so shall be.
Let us pray. May your merciful kindness, which we have implored, O Lord, benefit the soul of your departed servant Mario, that by these sacrificial gifts he may know the eternal company of Christ, in whom he hoped and whom he preached, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Good afternoon. You'll be pleased to know that um, Uncle Mario didn't leave us any notes. So, unfortunately, there's a bit of duplication with His Grace's um, sermon. Archbishop Mario Joseph Conti was simply a beloved family member to us. He was the long-awaited child of Josephine and Louis Conti, who had been trying for nine years before he was born in 1934. He was followed a year later by his only sibling, his sister Stella, and she went on to give him seven nieces and nephews, Margaret and Louis, who are in Australia, myself, John, Damien, who's at home with mother, uh, Dominic, Jacinta, and Mario Paul. Mario soon became a very busy uncle and reveled in his new role. With very devout parents and spiritual guidance, Mario showed us an early interest in joining the priesthood. When growing up in Elgin, when asked what he wanted to be when he grew up, he would humbly reply, the Pope. On this quest, he went to Blair's College when he was 13 and then moved to Rome about age 18 to complete his training before becoming the parish priest in Thurso and Wick. His mother, Josephine, was honoured to have her son a priest, but more was still to come. As a family, we are incredibly proud of his achievements as we watched him progress over the years to Bishop of Aberdeen and then Archbishop of Glasgow here. We remember his ordination as a bishop of Glasgow, the immense ceremony with so many priests that we'd ever seen before, and the great joy and pride of Stella at her brother's achievements. Mario devoted his life to the church and often spoke about his honor to be chosen to serve the people of Thurso, Wick, Aberdeen, and Glasgow. During visits to various places, we'd observe how he Sorry, sorry, observe him, taking every opportunity to engage with people, to hear their stories and encourage them in their faith. He had an incredible talent for making everyone feel relaxed, important and valued. He loved the Scottish people, the church he served and the country he lived in. He has been a constant throughout all of our lives, an ever-present celebrant whenever there was a baptism, marriage or sadly death within the family including those of his mother, Josephine, from old age, and his nephew and namesake, Mario Paul, from cancer. He would try and get down each year after Christmas period and visit us, or come down for a few days whenever he could 
often stopping by on his way to ecclesiastical events in Rome or in uh, London. These were special times for us all, as we got to share our love with him and feel his love for us. His bond with his sister Sulla was exceptionally strong. He was a rock for her and her for him, phoning each other every few days and corresponding regularly via letter. Throughout her life of marriage, Maria was always there providing sage advice, offering words of wisdom, comfort and support. Never judging, always listening. Something he did with all of us as we went through life's ups and downs and struggles. Growing up, his nieces and nephews would go to visit Uncle Mario during school holidays, and despite his heavy workload, he would always make time, whether playing table tennis or taking us out on visits around the sites of Verso, Aberdeen, and Glasgow, or along to events he had been invited to. Uncle being so well known and liked meant we have been introduced to so many interesting people and diverse people over the years, and have been behind the scenes in many, many historical places and churches where access would normally not be provided. Mario was in immensely proud of his Italian heritage. From time to time, Mario would arrange a family holiday so he could show us the sights and delights of Rome or the birthplace of his parents in Tuscany and introduce us to our family ties, including Augustino and Anna, who are with us today. He was particularly fond of Rome and always felt at home there, knowing all the little cafes to visit the sights to see, and the history of the city. He was very eloquent, softly spoken and knowledgeable, and took great pleasure in acting as an unpaid tour guide wherever we went. It is hard to believe that only a few weeks ago he was celebrating mass, uh, family mass at the church in Alton Priory with Father Beju of the Sacred Heart community, marking the 60th anniversary of Stella and Noel's, Noel's wedding. During the weekend, he was on top form, chatting to everyone and eager to know what everyone was up to, while also making sure everyone was okay. At one point, he had his diary out, eagerly planning travel dates for Danny's wedding next year. We will be eternally grateful for that last visit, as it gave us an opportunity to say goodbye to him, without even realising that that would be the last time we saw him in good health. Sitting at Uncle's bedside last Tuesday, we were touched, and comforted by the warmth and kindness of his friends that came to say the final goodbyes. We could clearly see a deep love in their actions and heartfelt words as he slowly made his final journey from this life. Their words reflected their sadness, not just at the loss of a member of the clergy, but also at the loss of a true friend. We can't mention everyone, but we'd like to say a special thank you to Anne and Nikki McCluskey and Francis for their love and friendship over the years and also to Jean, Elizabeth, and Alison, who were his um, housekeepers and provided friendship to Mario over many, many years. And so today, we say our final farewell to Mario, our dear brother, brother-in-law, uncle, great-uncle, and great-granduncle. Mario, thank you for being the person you were. Thank you for being part of our lives. You will be sorely missed by all of us, and we hope one day to meet you again in heaven. Rest in peace. Before we go our separate ways, we take leave of our brother Mario. May our farewell express our affection for him. May it ease our sadness and strengthen our hope. One day, we shall joyfully meet him again when the love of Christ, which conquers all things, destroys even death itself.
and Father of mercy, we commend our brother Mario in the sure and certain hope that together with all who have died in Christ, you will rise with him on the last day. We give you thanks for all the blessings that you bestowed upon Mario in this life. We are thankful as of your goodness and of our fellowship with the saints in Christ. Merciful Lord, come towards us and listen to our prayers. Open the gates of paradise to your servant and help us who remain to comfort one another with assurances of faith until we all meet in Christ and are with you and with our brother forever. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. In peace, let us now take Mario to his place of rest.
peace of Christ. May the Lord now welcome him to the table of God's children in heaven. May faith and hope in eternal life let us assist him with our prayers. Let us pray to the Lord also for ourselves. May we who mourn be reunited one day with Mario. Together may we meet Christ Jesus when he who is our light appears in glory. We read in sacred scripture, Come, you whom my Father has blessed, says the Lord, inherit the kingdom prepared for you since the foundation of the world. All praise to you, Lord of all creation. Praise to you, holy and living God. We praise and bless you for your mercy. We praise and bless you for your kindness. Blessed is the Lord our God. O 
Blessed is the Lord our God. You sanctify the homes of the living and make holy the places of the dead. You alone open the gates of righteousness and lead us to the dwellings of the saints. Blessed is the Lord our God. Blessed is the Lord our God. We praise you, our refuge and strength. We bless you, our God and Redeemer. Your praise is always in our hearts and on our lips. We remember the mighty deeds of the covenant. Blessed is the Lord our God. Blessed is the Lord our God. Almighty and ever-living God, remember the mercy with which you graced your servant Mario in life. Receive him, we pray, into the mansions of the saints. As we make ready our brother's resting place, look also with favor on those who mourn and comfort them in their loss. Grant this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Because God has chosen to call our brother Mario from this life to himself, we commit his body to its resting place. For we are dust, and unto dust we shall return. But the Lord Jesus will change our mortal bodies to be like his in glory. For he is risen, the firstborn from the dead. So let us commend our brother to the Lord, that the Lord may embrace him in peace and raise up his body on the last day. Brother Mario, let us pray to our Lord Jesus Christ, who said, I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in me shall live even in death, and whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. Lord, you consoled Martha and Mary in their distress. Draw near to us who mourn for Mario, and dry the tears of those who weep. We pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. You wept to the grave of Lazarus, your friend. Comfort us in our sorrow. We pray to the Lord. Lord hear you raised the dead to life. Give to our brother eternal life. We pray to the Lord. Lord hear you promised paradise to the repentant thief. Bring Mario to the joys of heaven. We pray to the Lord. Lord our brother was washed in baptism and anointed with the Holy Spirit. Give him fellowship with all your saints. We pray to the Lord. Lord hear he was nourished with your body and blood. Grant him a place at the table in your heavenly kingdom. We pray to the Lord. Lord hear now let us pray as Christ the Lord has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. God of holiness and power, accept our prayers on behalf of your servant Mario. Do not count his deeds against him. But in his heart, he desired to do your will. As his faith united him to your people on earth, 
So may your mercy join him to the angels in heaven. We ask this through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Bow your heads and pray for God's blessing. Merciful Lord, you know the anguish of the sorrowful. Your attention to the prayers of the humble. Hear your people who cry out to you in their need and strengthen their hope in your lasting goodness. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Eternal rest grant unto him, O Lord, and let perpetual light shine upon him. May he rest in peace. Amen. May his soul and the souls of all the faithful departed through the mercy of God rest in peace. May the peace of God which is beyond all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.